Welcome back to Sea Time and Harvest. We're so glad that you have joined us for another exciting edition yes. of Sea Time and Harvest. And last time, Sharice, we were showing the people how to harvest sorrel. That's right. And we asked you if you were interested in finding out how to make the sorrel. Mm -hmm. And we got some emails, and so we want to deliver to you today right. this presentation of how to make sorrel. Sharice, can you also remind us more about what we talked about? Okay, so the last time we were here, we talked about our sorrel harvest. We talked about the plants that we had and how beautiful they were doing and how productive they were. We also looked at the benefits of sorrel and we talked about how easy it is to grow, especially if you're in a tropical climate. Right. So today we're gonna get right into it and show you how to make your sorrel juice. So you planted your seed, you kept your plants going, you harvested your crop. So what to do? We're gonna make a sorrel juice. Now Jose, what's the first thing we're gonna do with our sorrel juice? Now the first thing we wanna do, and we have our water already boiling mm -hmm. and so we want to just give you a quick idea of what our ingredients are going to be okay we're going to use the sorrel sepal right. which is the uh the covering usually it's green but in this case it's red, it's red for mm -hmm. the flower okay so it's the it, co it encloses the seed and the flower that's right so it's just around the base and that's called the sepal that's right. Right? Okay, so we have the sorrel sepal. The sepal, we're going to use also a sweetener. Right. And in this presentation, we're going to use honey. honey. Okay, so you can use a liquid sweetener of your choice. We choose honey. Right. Yes. Also, we have uh, optional ginger. Okay. And with that being said, the ginger, of course, optional, that's the first thing we're going to add. So now when you have put your water on and you have your water at a roll and boil, you're going to get your ginger All right. and you're going to add it to your sorrel. Now this is already washed. How much you use depending on your liking for ginger. Right. All right. And so you can bruise it or you can cut it up and you can add it to your water so that it can boil. Hold on a second. Let's, uh, let, me, let me help you out here. I noticed something. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to have the sticker go into our pot. So with the ginger, we're going to boil that so that all the nutritional properties can be extracted. And what are some of the benefits of ginger? Well, in this case, I just wanted to point out, look at the sticker, it's organic. So this is a, an organic ginger. And some of the properties that um, we can have from the ginger for benefit are, the main thing is inflammation. Ginger is very good for inflammation. Mm -hmm. It's also good to reduce fever, right. also for indigestion and nausea. Okay. Now, the reason why we say it's optional is because it is also a stimulant. Right. So that means that you don't want to use too often. Much and too often. Too, too much too often. So we want to caution because we don't want any contraindications. We don't want any contraindications when we're using our... Our Food drink, for medicine. Yes. our drink, and our medicine. For medicine. That's right. So sorrel, sorrel, and the ginger that we're adding. Also, uh, the reason why we don't want to use stimulants too often is that ginger and other stimulants will also lose their potency if we use them too often. Also, right. and so, so then we'll need more to get the same result. And so you want to remember that when you're using your herbs, mm -hmm. you don't want to make herbs a part of your regular diet, except if you're, use, if you're having greens. Greens are excellent for eating on a regular basis. But if you're using them for medicinal purposes, they lose their potency if you use them every day. So if you get sick, then you'll, you're going to need more. Right. So that, th those are just some things you want to learn about when you're using medicine for your food. Okay, so now we've added our ginger to our pot and we see that our pot is at a roll and boil. You want to allow the ginger to boil for at least two to three minutes in the water as is. And what that's going to do, that's going to extract all the nutrients out of the ginger into the water. Okay. Now, if you put a whole ginger in a pot, it's not really going to do anything because you have, it's closed. So there's no exposure of surface area. So when you cut it up or you bruise your ginger, right. you allow most of the benefits of the ginger to be absorbed in the water so that as you drink this tea or juice, you can heal your body. Okay. All, All right. right. So while our ginger is boiling, what we would do next is to prepare our sorrel. All right. 
So, of course, we talked about in the last video, we showed you how to separate the sepal from the seeds. And after that, you may have uh, some insects on your, on your sorrel. So, uh, will we just put it in the pot and no, boil no. away? You don't want to ingest the insects, of course not. No. <laughs> so, what we would recommend is that you would wash it in a bowl. You can use either some salt or some organic soap mm -hmm. that you can buy at a store to wash off any bugs or to kill the bugs. Right. And this, this would eliminate you from eating them while, or drinking them, whatever have you. Right, so what, what the typical process is, you separate your sepal from your seeds, you put it in some water, you add a little bit of salt. You have to make sure that the water is cold because if you use any form of warm or hot water, okay. the nutrients is going to start separating into that water that you're going to throw out and you oh, don't want to do that. That's so true. soak it in some cold water Thank for you. about two to three minutes just to allow the salt or the, it's an organic vegetable wash to do its work. And then you're just going to separate it and put it in your pot that's boiling, right? And just like anything else, you don't want to overcook your, your food so that you kill the nutrients that are in it. So we would put our sorrel in our pot and we're just going to let it boil for about five minutes at a rolling boil. And then we're going to turn our pot off. Of course, we don't want to boil it for too long. Again, we don't want to um, kill the nutrients in the sorrel sepal. So we want to just let it boil for a little while that will get the, the process started of steeping. Right. The process that you want to do to get the nutrients into the water is called steeping yes. and not boiling. Yes. And why is that? Well, if you boil your soil, as we mentioned before, the right. nutrients are going to die. One thing I've noticed, and there's several ways you can make your soil juice or tea. You can boil it. Typically, most people will, okay, you boil it, you for like 10, 15 minutes, then you strain it, then you put ice in it or you put it in the fridge and you enjoy it. But I find that it's not as rich, it's not as strong when you do it that way. So how we generally do it is you allow your soil to boil um, for about three to five minutes. After you've added your ginger, then you add your soil, let it boil for three to five minutes and then you turn the fire off. You can let it sit for about two to four hours. The longer the better. Generally, we try to allow our soil to sit overnight so that right. all the nutrients is absorbed in the water and you'll just be left with just plain soil. There'll be nothing in it. You'll have all that nutrients in the water and you'll have thicker, richer, darker soil. And that's what we would okay. want to enjoy. So you want to let it boil for a good while, but not too long. Right. And you want to make sure that you boil it, but for not too long as well. Yes, correct. So you want to have the right amount of time. Correct. And with that, what are some of the benefits that we, we've mentioned it before, but remind us of some of the benefits of consuming sorrel. Right. And so as we look at the sorrel, even the water, you can see it already turning a reddish color. And this is a great indicator that the Lord has given us to remind us and let us know that this is good for the blood. Mm -hmm. And as we mentioned to you last time, Sorrel is definitely good for the blood. It's good for high blood pressure, right. good for circulation. Yes. It's rich in vitamins and antioxidants. Yes. It's good for your bones and also good for your immune system to build yes. immunity. Mm -hmm. And so that and the combination of the ginger, ginger makes it even more potent. This is a great medicine that you can drink just as it is as a tea. Yes. And, you know, it's kind of hard to drink it as is. But it's better for you if you, you know, when you have a tea, if you're sick, you're overcoming something, you can warm your sorrel and you can enjoy it like that without any sweetener. It's tough, but it's possible. <laughs> so when, when our sorrel is... Um, That's for the brave hearted. Yes. After our sorrel is boiled and everything is done, we let it sit overnight. So this is what the finished product will look like. You will see that the sorrel itself has lost a lot of its color. And the water is really, really rich. Now, several things you can do. You can, you'll strain this, of course, and then you'll use the water. Um, okay. You can throw out the sepal in this case. Now, say, for instance, you don't really want to let it stay for 24 hours, but you want to make your sorrel and you want to enjoy it the same day. Okay, Jose? Okay. You will make your sorrel tea. Okay. After four hours, you'll strain it. 
and then what would you, what can we do next? Well, since you didn't allow it to sit for so long, mm -hmm. you can reboil the the sepal right. for a little bit and let it sit again. Right. Therefore, you'll have more sorrel juice for your drinking. Yes, and um, that that will make all of the nutrients. You pull all the nutrients from the soil then. Right. Okay, and even in that case, you can use the pulp that's left over. You can use it for baking. You can use that liquid okay. to make um, jams or jellies. And interestingly, the sorrel seed itself has a pectin-like substance. So when you heat it, it has a gel-like consistency that will make it wonderful for making um, jams or jellies. All right, All right. so we're going to strain this. Let me uh, step over here to help you out. I'll just put this here so we don't really make a mess. Here, you hold, you hold that and I'll, I'll get the pot. Okay. And you see that rich, dark red. Now, if we just do that the same day and we uh, strain it, we won't have that rich color. It will have more like a, a pale red color. So we find that when we allow it to sit, when we allow it to steep for a few hours, then we get most of the, we get a lot of the nutrients out of the sorrel. All right. Thank you. All right. And there we have it. This is our sorrel juice. Now, as we mentioned, you can sweeten it with the liquid sweetener of your choice. I remember the first time we tried to sweeten sorrel with agave. Many of us used agave, but we were adding agave to the sorrel, and I was like, it's not sweetening, it's not right. getting sweet. So That's agave. When we, were, we were making the transition from sugar to, yes. to another more and, healthy yes. sweetener. So we tried different varieties of sweetener, and agave is wonderful. It's an excellent sweetener, but it just wouldn't get the sorrel sweet. And so we decided to use honey. We find honey is a better option and of course you sweeten to your taste so we have the finished product that's already sweetened with honey and here is our sorrel juice you see how rich it looks how dark red it is yeah. and it just looks so healthy for the body so let's give it a try and as as you pour that this right here we had it already boiling so i went ahead and i stopped the boil okay so you turn it I off just turn it off Okay. And now we're just going to allow it to sit and steep. That's going to go ahead and steep. We could let it steep again for a couple hours and then reboil it, add some more water, strain it out, add some more water, mm -hmm. and then go ahead and steep it again. Or we can let it sit overnight and just allow it to soak up all the nutrients. That's right. So we can get some rich looking sorrel juice just like that. Let's try it. It's very refreshing. I think I need a little bit more honey. I also agree. <laughs> but it's very good. And now with sorrel, you can mix it up. You can add different things to it. Um, I like to add coriander to my sorrel, which is a type of a cinnamon substitute that makes it really good. So that's one thing I like to add. And we can even make a lemonade. We can make a sorrel okay. lemonade. So that's another thing you can add too. So let me cut this lemon here. All right, and we'll try that to see what. So again, this is an organic lemon. So we try different ways to make our sorrel interesting. All right. There you go. All right, and I'm gonna need a strainer. Thank God it has seeds in it. That's a good thing. It's hard to find lemon with, with seeds. That's much better. That's much better. All right, let me try it before I put the lemon in there. You already sweetened mine? Yes. Oh yeah, that's good. And it's, it's not too sweet, but it just tastes so refreshing. And this has been in the fridge already, so this was already cooled for us. And right. it tastes so good. Uh, just a hint of lemon now. Now, Jose, remember um, we had some uh, friends mm. come to our house to visit, and they saw the sorrel plant. 
Can yes. you share yes. that experience with them, with our viewers? So we had some friends come over, and we had our, our, the side of our house was lined up with sorrel. And they were asking, what is that that you have over there? What are those bushes? So we told them, that's the sorrel. Well, they were not familiar with it. They were like, sorrel, what is that? And we told them that it was a traditional Jamaican drink, that mm -hmm. we, we take the, the sepal, and then we boil it, and not boil it, but we boil for it. a little bit, mm -hmm. and then steep it. And then we drink that. And so we let them try it, and they, they loved it. And we told them that it's very healthy, it's good for you. And so they wanted to learn more about it because they're, they're very much into health. And as they were inquiring, they realized, wow, this is so beneficial. And they, they saw that it was good for high blood pressure, mm -hmm. for circulation, and, and all the things that we mentioned, how beneficial it is. They came back and they were pleading with us. Yeah, they like, said, Jose, Charisse, please give us more of that sore, please. And so surely we gave them some more. But if you don't know, then you wouldn't be able to, to really appreciate mm -hmm. how good it is. Yes. Because not only is it refreshing, they enjoyed drinking it, but when they realized benefits, how good it was for the you, health they wanted it even more. Yes. And so if you want sorrel, if you are in an area where you don't really get sorrel, you don't have a Caribbean store there where you can go out and purchase whether dried sorrel or fresh sorrel, you can email us, seedtoharvest at safetoserveministries.com. And we will get some seed to you. Yes. That's seed to harvest at safe to serve ministry.com. And we will mail you some seeds. Right. We'll be more than glad to do that. You know, Sharice, there's a spiritual application that we can learn from this. Mm -hmm. As we were looking at the sorrel in the plants, in, in the bushes, and we, we saw that the winter was coming, and we try to get as much as we can. But even still, there was some sorrows still left on the, on the bush. That's right. And what happened as a result? Those went to waste. So we had to pull them out. They molded. Mm -hmm. And we can't use molded fruit. It has to be good fruit. Right. And so we can see there that the, the Lord tells us to learn from, from the ant. Mm -hmm. You know, the ant in Proverbs 6, 6 through 8, it says, he, he tells us there, go, go to, to the, the ant. ant. Thou slugger, consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. So this ant in the time of harvest is reaping those harvests, reaping that harvest, getting ready for the winter, winter. Mm -hmm. that cold blast that is coming, that crisis that is coming. So the Lord is telling us that we need to get ready for what is soon to come. Also, the fruit that God wants us to have is the fruit of the Spirit. That's right. So if we're not building character for eternity, we will find ourselves in a lost condition. Mm -hmm. You know, in Jeremiah 8.20, the Lord reminds us that very same thing. He says, the harvest is past. The summer is ended and we mm -hmm. are not saved. saved. And so we may find ourselves in a place, in a time when it is too late, when the, sar when the harvest has already passed. And so we have to be diligent to seek the Lord while he may be found, to make or to build that character for eternity. God wants to help us, but we cannot be lazy. We have to put our work in. Likewise, in the natural and so it is in the spiritual. So we don't want that soil to go to waste, oh, right, Sharice? No. no, no. When we plant that seed, we want to make sure that we're out there Bringing gathering the those sepals so we can make some delicious sorrel juice. So I hope that you're able to let us know if you need some seed so that you too can enjoy some sorrel juice. So make sure you contact us. And also, until then, happy, happy planting. planting.